the kingdom will only come if we focus on its king. Well, good morning, everybody, and a very big welcome to BKIM and Truthvine Morning Glory. And our much-loved Reverend Betty King, our senior pastor, sends her love. My name is Pastor Suzanne, and before we do anything else, let's just commit this short time to the Lord. And Father, we want to thank you. We thank you for a, a moment to just start the day with you. We thank you for the opportunity to come into your presence. We thank you for the fresh revelation that you are going to release even in these few minutes. Lord, we thank you that your word says that as we draw close to you, you will draw close to us. And so we thank you for your presence upon us right now. We just acknowledge our need of you, Lord God, and we surrender to your spirit and to your will today. We've been talking in these broadcasts around the theme that prophetically this is the season for the sons of God to manifest and it's the time for the kingdom of God to be seen in increasing measure in our society and in our nations. And God intends each one of us to be fruitful, to prosper, uh, even to see a, a harvest in our own lives. And so he's been preparing us to do just that. And as we came into this month of May, Reverend Betty just began to release this word about this is the month to settle. That God is settling issues and he is giving us the opportunity to settle outstanding issues with him and with each other. And she actually raised the question, how do you want to write, you know, the, the word settle over your life? And that might be a question that you would like to just take a, a moment to, to give to him and to ask him about, Lord, where do I still need to settle? Because we have to settle certain things in our own lives that we can settle where God has called us to. Now, I'm going to read in a moment from Psalm 37, verses 3 to 5, but it talks about dwelling or settling in the land. And God has land for every one of us where he calls us to dwell or to settle. And for some, that will be a nation that's not our own that he's called us to. You know, for others, it will be a city, it'll be an, a sphere of influence, it might even be our family. And it's also about the, the church, the, the body that he has connected us to, where we need also to settle. And the purpose of settling, we'll find out in a moment when we read that scripture, but it's basically about bringing his goodness, doing good, some of the, the translations say and seeing his faithfulness come. So let's read Psalm 37 verses three to five. I'm gonna read from the New King James Version. And it says, trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and feed on his faithfulness. And the New English translation uses the word settle in the land. Delight yourself also in the Lord and he shall give you the desires of your heart. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust also in him, 
and he shall bring it to pass. You know, when certain things are settled in our lives, it removes anxiety, it removes stress, it removes warfare, it removes the, up, uh, the emotional upheavals, and it positions us both to receive God's blessing and to be a blessing. One of the specific promises in this passage, these three verses, is about God giving us the desires of our heart. But what is beautiful and what is so very clear is that that is not the focus. It's an outcome. The focus of the passage is on God, it's on Him. The kingdom will only come if we focus on its king. And so the scripture uses words like trust, delight yourself, commit your ways to God. And trust to me is faith activated. But if you read a, uh, an unusual version, the Derby version, it actually uses the word confide. And what that means is that if we really trust God, the person we will go to with the questions, the queries, you know, all the, the, the issues of our lives, the person we'll go to first and foremost is God because we will trust him to hear, to listen and to have the answers. Delighting ourselves in him means, you know, desiring to please him. Committing our way to him again is that practical outworking of trust, activating our trust but with our journey through life. And so for some, the first place that needs settling in you is the trusting that your God-given dreams and desires are held in heaven, that he has them in his hands and no one else can take them from you. And that as we walk according to his word, that we, we obey the the conditions given in these, these verses, and these verses contain truths that go right through his word. As we're faithful in the place he's positioned us, his promises will start to manifest in our lives because of his faithfulness. We don't have to push for them. We don't have to try and take shortcuts because our first priority is him. And so I just want to, to declare that, to pray that over you now, that for everyone listening this morning, there's just that choice to focus on the Father, to focus our hearts on Him, to focus our thoughts on Him. And I just release that grace to do so amongst all the you know the thoughts that are already you know concerning the day that we will take the moment to choose to walk our day focused on him but there will be some who feel as though they've lost that ability to actually delight in him you've lost that ability to focus on him your mind is distracted your your thoughts are all over the place and God is giving you an opportunity right now as you listen to say, God, I want my walk with you back. I want to take my eyes off of my circumstances and put them on you again. And so Lord, I just release just the peace, the grace, Lord, we just say, Lord, we choose you. We choose you and the Spirit of God is there to help you. As you make that decision, God is quick to answer. He hears and he will respond. He is releasing revelation to know the things that we need to uproot, you know, the things that uh, are holding us back and he's giving us the capacity to do so. And so I just pray that for you now, 
that in this month to settle issues, you will go to him and say, God, I want my walk with him back. And I just pray that for you. I pray that over you. And Lord, we come and over every place, Lord, where failure and rejection and ambition, Lord, unforgiveness or simply inconsistency have caused us to, to be unsettled in the season that's just gone, Lord. I, well, I just want to declare settled into your life, settled over these issues. And that is just a choice that then you go to work through. And so, Lord, I ask you that you will come and you will meet with your people, Lord God, that as they turn their eyes to you, you will give them the revelation, Lord, that they need at this time. I thank you for your presence. If you read Psalm 37, verse 3, actually in the message, it's a very unusual phrase. It says, settle down and stick to your last. And that's about consistency and commitment, which are key words for settling. You know, in our culture, to be consistent isn't something that we necessarily uh, relate to naturally. Commitment is something that can be unusual for some people. And if our focus is on ourselves, we will be often wondering, should we be somewhere else? Should we be doing something else? We can be moving from place to place. We will not be settled. But if we focus on the Lord, then everything shifts. You know, if we're not settled, we're restricted. We're not free. We're actually restricted in our ability to go do good. We're restricted in our ability to sow and to reap our harvest. But as we delight ourselves in him, his beauty in us will attract his favor in his way and in his time. I was reading Song of Songs this week and in chapter 4 verse 8 in the Passion Translation there's a short note which simply refers to the realm where all God's promises are kept and realized and it's called a place of settled security and that's the place where God wants you and I to dwell. Lord, we come to you and we ask, Lord, that you would settle our hearts, that as we turn our eyes upon you, there will come such a sense of peace and security and rest into our spirits that settling will become easy and straightforward. And you know, when we're settled, we recognize and understand the boundaries of the land that God puts around us. And he puts those boundaries around us, not to limit us, but to keep us secure and protected. So Lord, we just thank you. We thank you that Lord, even as you are calling us to settle and to be those who do good, Lord, you do good to us all the time. Surely goodness and mercy will follow us all our lives. But you know, the second aspect that I just want to briefly look at that God wants to settle at this time is to do with our past. And Reverend Betty, she just said, you know, the only way to break the past is to labor, labor for the future. The past can't be changed. But if we don't settle certain things, we can't then settle in the now and the new. 
And God is wanting to settle all the issues that hang over you, the shadows of the past season. And we have keys to do that. We know that we have the keys. We need to forgive those that uh, have hurt or wounded us. And we need to repent over issues where we've got it wrong. But you know, because you're listening to this broadcast this morning, I think you would know those things. The difficulty comes when we don't see where things have gone wrong and why they've gone wrong. And sometimes that's because they're very familiar to us. Attitudes, mindsets, emotions are so familiar that they actually feel right to us. They can also be very comfortable. So something like insecurity, well actually you feel secure in your insecurity because you're familiar with it and you don't have to push past it. And so right now, I want to pray over you. And Lord, I ask you that you will give revelation where people are familiar in emotions and mindsets and behavior and habits that, Lord, are holding them in the past and causing them to be unsettled. And Lord, we ask that you would come in your mercy. And for those of you who are saying, yes, I want my past settled, that I can move into the future, I just ask you to agree with this now. Lord, we ask that you will give revelation of the things, Lord, that you want to settle in our lives, that you want to deal with, which you want to actually call us and cause us to move past, and that you want to uproot, that they don't hinder us in the days ahead. And so, Lord, we ask you to reveal where there needs to be revelation. We ask you to uproot where there needs to be an uprooting. We ask you to cause us to want to deal with those things, Lord, that you are putting your finger on at this time. Lord, that we will deal with issues of identity, but most of all, that our priority in this time will be to please you and not ourselves. I want to thank you, Lord, that you are raising a people whose primary desire is to please you. And Lord, right now we come into agreement with your spirit. And we say, Lord, your spirit is saying move to move. That God's spirit is blowing. You know, that every emotion, mindset or wrong motivation that has hindered us from settling in the past is now shifting that we can settle these things for the future. We declare this is a time, Lord, when you are moving your people out of fear, out of failure, out of entanglements, that, Lord, the plans and the purposes you have for them can actually be released. And Lord, we declare that the church in our nations, as these things get settled in our lives, will move in obedience and sensitivity to your spirit, causing the manifestation of your kingdom to increase. And it will become openly visible beyond the walls of our buildings, in the streets and the communities and the towns and the cities of our lands. In Jesus' name. Lord, we thank you for today. And I want to thank you, all of you listening, for joining us today. Bless you in your day. Have a good day. And we look forward to seeing you again soon. Bye-bye.